Hello and welcome back my friends with of course another Tillemans video but this time as you look on the date it's not Fiendsmith Tillemans yet we're going to talk about that when the time comes if my budget allows it but today we're talking about uh, yeah, something different competitive Tillemans so far we have been having fun with like Manadiums, Tear and Friends like a Tear Pile, Tear and um light swans right good decks decks that can put up some really massive end boards and uh can do can do well yes but now i'm going to show you something that i think is a bit more of a competitive list if you're looking at the schedule okay i have a ycs or <laughs> or a wcq or nationals or whatever coming up right this is the season right now and uh yeah, if you're uh, that desperate to get inspiration from me, then uh, get some help. But I'm here with the help, with the tier help. Let's get into the deck profile. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, my friends, let's get right into this uh, deck profile again. As always, we have to do tier limit deck profiles now, uh, like daily or whatever. I'm cooking up so many tier lists, man, it's crazy. Again, as I said, this is going to be a bit more competitive. So yeah, sure, we have still like some friends accompanying our Tillemans cards, but uh, yeah, I try to be reasonable with what we're doing. So again, as always, let's just go through this. Lovely girls, please come back to like two or something at least. Tear Cash is there for us with three. Again, one of the best cards. It can be a mil uh, five if we want it. I am playing with grief right now because grief can be quite helpful. The effect in grief again, uh, it comes up right. It uh, has nice, nice synergy with uh, tear cash right, um, and overall it's uh, just uh, nice. Lovely interaction is also like being able to recycle your Kaleido hearts uh, right. If they get into the graveyards, it can be quite hard to get them out. So that's uh, like that's something. Grief just nice. Again, as always, two scream because three is too many and two is correct. We are playing the three shiny pearl rhinos. Actually, we're playing four. Uh, yeah, there's there will never be any change here. I mean, pearl rhino is just amazing. Two scream, a meta noise, and a trivikama. Yeah, I know, I know. It's nothing really new so far uh, because yeah, we we play nearly as many tier cards uh, as we can or as we are allowed to then wow a change now we're playing two fender um yeah the a big issue with tier is kind of going second at the moment uh usually tier can deal with going second pretty easily due to like how good our engine is but yeah the ban list is uh, like a thing so that is not as strong anymore and especially with the cringe fire decks getting more and more support like heh like unbanned kit colors or something Man, why the fuck are these fire decks getting more support? Like, Fiendsmith engine comes out. Sure, we can cook with, uh, with it in tier, but I mean, hi, yay, yay. Anyway, that's why we are adding another cringe Fenrir. So we, we have more bot breaking potential because Fenrir is uh, like, still quite a decent bot breaker. And I mean, it searches our engine, right? That's uh, just how lovely it works. Then, uh, still two shufflers. Uh, two. Yeah, again, it's dead cards in hand, and you know, and you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, shufflers are uh, like so fucking good uh, against uh, like some of the current meta decks. Shuffler the Ubel cards in their graveyard, so uh, they can't fuse so easily. This is if you go first, uh, because obviously it's a summon effect, you have to do it preemptively. Or shuffling the level 2s away from our Snake Eye players, right? It's just, yeah, the shufflers are great. And. Here. If you are playing truly, truly 120% competitive, I can understand why you would cut the Beast Kings. Uh, yeah, I, I do not, right? My priorities lie elsewhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, so like as long as we don't have Kit, I need to have a way to get into uh, to get into Lulu, and uh, I'm not even going to pause there. That's what I meant. Um, so yeah, we need the Beast Kings. Again, they are not a terrible card, but obviously not what you want, uh, like <laughs> ever. Another card that I am not 100% sure if we really, really need it in a more competitive list and uh, so on and so on is malicious. But the, th the fact that it's a three of the fact that it's a dark, the fact that it's an easy summon uh, at any point if you mill it and we do mill quite a bit, 
um, yeah, just convinces me again and again. You could cut these five cards, uh, then the list would be at, I think, 39, 38 or something, uh, and then just add uh, yeah, another Fenrir or uh, I don't know, man. You you do you, but uh, yeah, if you if you don't like these, then just yeah, play play something you like, and uh, yeah, the list won't change too much. Uh, the fact is, just you get so much easy link material with malicious. It's just crazy, and uh, yeah, I, I I I do like that. Another brick, the Shadow Beast. Uh, yeah, we like the draw, but uh, obviously this is in here for uh, nefarious reasons. But uh, yeah, let's get rid of all these bricks in our hand with, uh, yeah, now a uh, double Sark, not one Sark. Uh, so we have five hand cleaners uh, just from the horror cards alone. Uh, so yeah, the previous six bricks, right, uh, that I showed you, uh, we can get rid of them uh, very easily with Imseti. Obviously, Sharon can also discard, uh, but uh, yeah, the horse cards are just really nice for doing just that. Other cards that help us with getting rid of cards in our hand that we don't like or unbreaking our hands are obviously the dangers. And again, as always, Dark Aqua is good. We need Dark Aqua, that's why we play Danger Nessie. And Mothman is the level 4, that's why we play him. Uh, it's it's not Witchcraft, it's Telemans, right? Uh, yeah. Now, uh, yeah, let's add some tactics. Uh, yeah. Again. Helping with going second. Sure, obviously, it's good going first as well, right? We all know that tactics, it's uh, tactic is just an amazing card. But uh, yeah, it, if we need some help going second, we can get it with the tactics. Now we are graveyard deck, so let's have some graveyard based cards. Called by for the random chance to get rid of a D shifter or something like that, or to protect our place in general. Don't have to explain call by and uh, yeah uh, as i said in the ubel bug profile not sure of the author but uh yeah we can also get rid of prometheans or uh flamberges or whatever else is in our uh opponent's graveyard with this uh yeah this card is an absolute tier staple and foolish barrel uh sure i've not played with it in most of the previous list but i mean we can get a name we can get fusion material like nessie or the beast king or the shadow card we can get combo pieces like the malicious for like link plays right uh, or we can actually just get a shuffler into the graveyard uh yeah this is just amazing um sure spell cards boo boo spell cards uh, that don't do anything when we mill them uh yeah sure they suck but uh foolish barrel i think is absolutely worth it now and uh yeah, that's uh the foolish cards plus i guess called by and the last card for our deck is the Black Goat Laughs. Uh, it's just really fun. Helps going first or going second. Uh, yeah, has some really nice effects. And uh, yeah, if you know who you're playing against, what deck you're playing against, it just really comes up nice. And uh, yeah, it's just some nice add-on that makes uh, your hands or mills uh, just a bit better. Now for the extra deck, uh, again, Lulu as always. Love, 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 mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Uh, if you don't want to play her for foolish reasons, uh, maybe because you don't want to play the bricks in your main deck, then uh, yeah, maybe play something like uh, Dark. Dark is a card I cut, didn't have the space for it. Sure, I know it's a pretty good card, who doesn't? But uh, yeah, for Lulu, I mean, I would cut off my own arm and I would cut a Dark any time of the day. Then the other fusions, like always, accompanied by uh, a cringe floodgate, but again, if we're looking to be, uh, yeah, winning tournaments, it's Floodgate Turbo Time. Floodgates and hand traps is what rules the world right now, accompanied with one card combos. So, uh, yeah, winner just uh, fits right into that. For the Xyz, Redo as always, Bahamut into Toad, Zombie Vampire, nothing changes here. And uh, I'm playing the Typhoon right now, a bit iffy, right? There are not that many high attack level monsters all around right now. But it's still a good card and again it helps with our main problem going second. Going first we can establish multi-layered boards that are yeah, <laughs> absolutely ballin' uh, with Omni Negates and all kinds of uh, different interruptions, right? I've shown it multiple times, right? Uh, the end board of tier elements doesn't change too much. Obviously without the light spawn cards we are lacking some consistency in our mills and some like pop-off potential. But uh, yeah, regardless, 
going second is what we need help with right now and that's why this guy is in here coming to the links we are currently playing the sprint uh yeah sprint is just uh good enough for the consistency to get at least a fusion in and so on and so on it's just really nice it obviously has some nefarious reasons as well but uh yeah we talk about later then as always cross sheep ip sp and apo uh, yeah, again, we make these cards so easily and cross sheep is just the uh, like, I don't know, the elf or something of the deck. It's just amazing. Uh, yeah, overall, as always, our extra deck has not changed too much. I mean, that would be a huge surprise uh, with some of these cards just being staple good or needed for our uh, end boards or just being tier cards, right? Uh, so yeah. what changes did you expect? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Now. For the first time ever, or oh, actually for the first time for Tillamans, right? Uh, yeah, a side deck. Um, yeah, uh, let me know, let me know your thoughts. Obviously side decks are uh, situational given on uh, your local scene and so on and so on. But uh, I'll just uh, take a quick crack at it with the eyes on the upcoming format. Uh, obviously Prime, um, staple card for Tillamans uh, side decks. I'm not playing the heartbeat, space is one reason. And the lack of like uh yeah spell and traps being too relevant right sure people are equipping monsters now and in the near future into the uh, sp uh, spell and trap zone but uh yeah if 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 they have done that i mean they also have the um what is it omni negate with uh, lacrimosa uh so yeah i mean it's just not good enough and yeah against other trap decks we have other options uh let me show you when we get there then we are playing uh, three bestials. Bestials, pretty nice. Obviously, as tier players, we hate them because they banish our uh, darks, <laughs> our names from our graveyard. Uh, that's obviously pretty cringe. Uh, would be good if we had more names, but yeah, regardless, bestials, three different names so that we can use all of them and so on and so on. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't need to explain these, right? They're, they should be known right now. And uh, yeah, obviously, they're pretty good. More monsters coming up with uh, yeah the goddess obviously uh yeah it's a card that i would want to play more often in my main deck but uh yeah space is a thing so if you run into the random tower player or something like that uh, then having the goddess is just nice and uh, it's just overall a positive card but uh, not fit for the main uh, extra deck then we are going to steal your girl I mean, look at this tier element strip. We're going to mind control her, steal her, and then she's going to change uh, sides uh, or something like that. Uh, yeah, stealing our opponent's monsters um, in three different ways. Uh, obviously, the best options are at once, so that's why we only play one of these. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, what is it, mind control is the next best option. We could play more of these, uh, but uh, yeah, I just uh, decide we go with three one-offs. And then we're also on the safer side with, uh, well, whatever types of negates uh, our opponent can throw at us. They also, look, they shine pretty nicely. And yeah, we steal our opponents, right? Again, uh, Omni negates are rarer, uh, obviously, <laughs> until Fiendsmith. But uh, yeah, they're still rarer, so Spell and Trap Bot Breakers are uh, a wonderful way to go. And again, what did I say like multiple times to, to, during the video? We need help going second. And uh, yeah, this is one way to do it and then to link away their cards, profit off them, instead of just destroying them, which, I mean, we can do that, but we'll talk about that in a second. Next type of board breakers, droplets, evenly matched. Now, why now why do we play these? And yeah, I mean, first of all, we can't play droplet and dark ruler no more, right? They kind of do the same thing, so that's not an option. Then the question is, do we play droplet and evenly? Do we play evenly and uh, dark ruler? Do we play like something else, right? The first thing is we play evenly due to the fact that we uh, can get rid of spell and trap cards as well. So this card is versatile in that aspect that we can get rid of, of the monsters and the spell and traps. So against the random track bags, it's good. And against some of the upcoming uh, Snake Eye and Fiendsmith cards that put monsters into their spell and trap card zone. Then in terms of a uh, spell bolt breaker, droplet or the dark ruler, dark ruler is I, I i'm honest better but droplet has i'd say two advantages that do matter and uh, first of all it's a quick spell so we can set it and so on and so on 
So it has uh, that utility as well. And the next thing is we can discard our uh, cards into the graveyard. Um, like some shadows, like militias and like shufflers and like all these bricks that we don't want to have in our hand, Droplet makes us discard them. That's what uh, convinced me to play Droplet instead of Dark Ruler in this uh, particular uh, side deck. And then lastly, very cringe, a scatter shot. Uh, yeah, one of the benefits of playing Sprint is that we can win in time, which I mean, it's pretty cringe. And uh, yeah, I mean, against Snake Eye, the burn of the uh, Scattershot might not even matter because they can burn us for 1,200, I believe. So yeah, this is not always enough, but. So that's it for the extra deck, side deck, main deck, everything deck. Yeah, let me know your thoughts about all of this. Um, what would your approach be? Red the meta is obviously going to change in just a week. So uh, yeah, maybe you'd say this list is a bit redundant, but uh, yeah, I'm still not too sure if I want to uh, invest hundreds of euros into the Fiendsmith engine that will get banned out in, what is it, six weeks, five weeks, right? If we like look at sh uh, shipping uh, time as well, like you get a month or so of playing with it. And then since they're not going to ban the Fiendsmith cards themselves, right, that would kill the product, they're probably going to ban Beatrice or something and uh, then look at the Snake Eye cards. I think that's the most realistic way it's going to go down. Uh, the Fiendsmith cards will still do some other really nice things for tier and for other decks as well. But uh, yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed. Let's go into the outro. Well, that's it for today. Hope I showed you something that's not completely redundant. Maybe there was something new, maybe something interesting along the way. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section down below. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe you say this is boosted. Never put these cards into your deck. And I'm going to learn from your input, hopefully. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Hope you take care of yourselves. Have some good milks and see you around. Bye bye, my friends.